This conference will now be recorded. <laughs> Good. Um, I do apologize. Today we don't have a guest speaker. Um, I, it was just quite complicated to find someone because I think we were just before the holiday season. But we do have a lot of uh, things to share with you. And as always, you know, this is also a space for you. So if there is anything you wish us to ask or discuss, feel free to do so. Um, either just stop us as we're talking or feel free to drop in a line in the chat section. So I think we can just start with a few updates. Um, I'll just start with our card. And so I want to say Merry Christmas to all. <laughs> this is our DMP online card with our whole new team. Um, we were growing our team and I think we're very lucky um, to have now three software developers. So we're joined uh, most recently by, by Marta. Um, say hello. Hi. Hi. And um, I think it was last month we were joined by Ray from the Adina team from Edinburgh University. And yeah, we are very happy to, to grow our team. Um, so I think we can just move in into the EOS portal. Is this something, Sarah, you could describe? Yeah, yeah of course. So I don't know how much people will know about EOS, um, but the European Open Science Cloud is a big initiative um, to try and federate all of the infrastructure in um, different countries so that we can kind of do open science better collectively. And within EOSC, there's a thing called the portal, um, which is intended to be a catalog of services and also eventually a catalog to different data sets that people can access. And we've registered DMP online as a service within the EOSC portal. Um, so you can see an overview. Um, Magdalene is just show, sharing that on screen now. And if you scroll down, yeah. um, you can see um, essentially the different service offers we have with DMP online. So the tool is free for anyone to use to create data management plans. And then we have different subscription models if universities want to customize it, um, add their own branding and their own guidance and details. Um, so I know some of you have done that already. If you want to put a comment or a review, by all means do. Let us know how the service is for, for you. So yeah, we're, we're pleased to, to be accessible via EOSC now too. I did share the link with you in the chat as well. So if you want to have a look, feel free to do so. Um, we have a few things about the IDCC to share with you. So um, we are having the IDCC from the 17 till 20th of February um, in 2020. And we are hoping you're going to register and come and see us. Um, from the DMP online team, we'll be having some rest, uh, giving a demonstration of DMP roadmap um, on the machine actionable DMPs. And I'll be having a lighting talk about the DMP online business model, um, explaining how we balance um, our freemium model and at the same time make ourselves uh, more sustainable. Um, both of these will be taking place, I mean my talk and uh, some demonstration will be taking place on the 18th of February. Um, and there is a full conference program for you to see. Um, so it will be lovely if you can make it and if you can see us and meet us in Dublin. I don't know whether there would be anything else you would like to yeah, add. Yeah, I think I actually if you can show the mm -hmm. program. So for anyone who yeah. isn't familiar, um, IDCC is the DCC's annual conference. So it's a very international conference. We have people from Australia and the States um, and all across Europe. Um, and a few people from Asia as well. Um, and there's actually two slots on data management plans, which might be of interest. So on the first day, we've got um, three uh, like proper full paper talks. Um, one that's come from Liv Kvala. Um, she's a Norwegian researcher. Um, she's looking at the DMP as a boundary object. Um, and how you have collaborations across different groups to, to do good data management planning. Um, there's also a talk um, about data management plans as a risk catalog, which comes from a researcher in Germany. And then Tomasz Mixer, who's been involved in the Research Data Alliance work, is going to be speaking about machine actionable DMPs and integrations with um, RE3 data so that you can automatically find relevant repositories. So there'll be three talks, and then um, we have the demonstrations, as Magdalena mentioned. Um, so Sam Rust from our team will be doing a demonstration on what we've been doing in DMP Roadmap and the machine actionable use cases we have there. Um, and a colleague from France, 
Benjamin from the DMV Opidor team will be talking about a new um, grant they have and demonstrating some of the features they've been adding to the tool. And background noise there. Um, we've got a couple of other talks, one from Tom Ranner from Haplo um, and one from a German team, um, DataViz. So there's actually quite a lot of content around data management plans at IDCC. Um, so if you are coming along, I think they're useful tracks for you to be aware of. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, I keep repeating myself, but just to remind you all, um, we are having a user group in Utrecht on the 20th of January um, 2020. So in a case you didn't get in touch with me just yet, feel free to drop me an email at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk um, to express your interest um, to join the user group. And now I'll get back to you. Um, yeah, so what? So for anyone who's not been to a user group, um, what we generally do there is we'll either um, present our development plans and demonstrate new features. So at the last user group, we went through the conditional question feature and we showed you how that worked and got feedback on it. And we also use them as a way to brainstorm ideas with you um, around what you need in the tool. And with us having the next user group in the Netherlands, um, we'll be looking at some of the features like the, the regionalization of content in the tool so that we can filter things by um, groups of universities. You know, so we can say these are the Dutch funders and the Dutch universities and, and give a, you know, like a, a better experience to people in different countries. But if there's features that you would like to discuss or bring up, um, we can add those to the user group agenda as well. Yeah. Um, so again, if you if you wish to get in touch with me, just drop me a line at dmponline at dcc.ac.uk. Um, it's taking place in Utrecht on the 20th of January 2020. I hear it. I don't know why I'm still living in 2019. Oh, uh, yeah, 2020. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about the mistake. Okay. Um, we are still doing a work um, on the conditional questions. Ray, do you want to say a few lines about the work you're doing there? or? getting a lot of feedback actually Ray. Mm -hmm. I think maybe your microphone's not connected properly. Um, but I, I can perhaps chip in. So for people who aren't aware, we, we did some work around conditional questions so that you can essentially set logic um, between questions. You can say that if an answer is yes to a certain question, it brings in other questions or it skips a set of questions. Um, or you can set alerts to um, have like an email if there's a certain answer which the university wants to be alerted to. Um, so that work has been done. We haven't actually got it into this current release um, because Ray and Sam have been making some adjustments um, uh, to that, but that will be out in early January. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, we can show that at the next user group if people haven't already seen it. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, for those that haven't seen it, um, our December newsletter is out. I again, share the link. I won't be going into too much details um, because, as I said, there is a link, so you can have a quick look through. But as always, we're uh, sharing a short summary from November drop-in session, and I always share a link with you in here, which you can follow if you want to listen to this. Um, we were writing, well, Sarah have written an article about what we have decided to, um, where we wish to host our um, services. Mm -hmm. So we have decided we will be staying in Adina service um, servers rather than moving to Amazon. So if you want to read more about this. Um, yeah, and one, one comment actually for any overseas mm -hmm. users, um, the, the key thing to be aware of with, with our wonderful Brexit situation in the UK um, is that we will be signing um, additional clauses mm -hmm. so that as the UK leaves Europe, um, we are still upholding the, the common GDPR regulation. So nothing will change in terms of your service provisions. Okay, thank you, Sarah. Um, then we were just sharing a wee blog post about um, our meeting in the mid of November. And um, so we met with our colleagues from the MP2 and from Opidor from France. And we were just planning our work for the 
upcoming year. So again, I do suggest you to have a look through and also we are sharing in the blog post um, the link to to the work as we planned it for the following year. So in a case you're interested to see some bigger features or things we're planning to do, um, I would suggest you to have a look there. Yeah, one, one comment there, so there's a link as Magdalena says to the development roadmap in there. Um, and one of the other things we've discussed in that post is about um, really profiling what the tool can do for organizations. So one thing we're planning to do in spring next year, the um, default template we have within DMT Online, um, we want to essentially use that as a way to show the key features in the tool. So things like the different formats of questions or the integrations with things like the metadata standards catalog mm -hmm. um, and the um, uh, things like the conditional questions. Yeah. So we're going to adjust the default template so that it it's a lot more um, useful and easier to follow um, and you also get an output um, which is more machine actionable and that you can pull certain elements out of like certain standards or names of repositories. So we're going to do an integration with Re3 Data and profile that on the, the default template. Okay, I'm just showing you like um, very quickly what it looks like and again feel free to have a more look into that. And as we mentioned at the beginning of this phone call, we were just mentioning that um, Sam and myself will be at the IDCC 2020 and we we're hoping to see you there. Um, then I put together a wee summary of our uh, last release. Majority of the tickets we worked on were the accessibility tickets um, because there was legislation coming out um, with the requirement for us to have the accessibility statement on DMP Online. So um, our software developers worked really hard to update all. Um, and this month we are featuring a story from Lindsay uh, from University of York um, where she was uh, saying how they go about using DMP Online. And this month, I was just um, having, I, we were profiling a short video um, where we just explained to you how you can grant the administrator privileges yourself because quite often we do receive emails to DMP Online Help Desk where you ask us to add someone as your admin for your institution. And we are more than happy to do that. But you, as administrators, if you're an administrator for your institution, can actually grant these rights to other users. Um, and we added, one of the things we added after the last user group was um, the ability to give somebody just the plan review control. Because mm -hmm. I know, for instance, in the Netherlands, you've got a lot of data stewards who you just want them to review plans, not to edit templates or guidance. So, so those permissions are quite granular. So you can give different levels to different people. Mm -hmm. And as always, um, we're just sharing some dates with you. So um, I was saying that on the 20th of January here, I have to write here, I'm quite pleased with that, we are having the user group in Utrecht. And um, our next phone call is going to be on the 22nd of January. And yeah, on and then the February one and the IDCC group. So that's our newsletter. Um, just a quick look through. Um, Recently, um, I have been asked to add the Swedish Research Council template uh, to the MP Online, so I have done so, um, and I have also contacted Swedish Research Council to have a look through. They didn't get back in touch with me just yet, um, but what I did, I just really added what they were having on their web page, so hopefully all is good. Um, in a case you're interested to listen to our last um, DMP online drop-in session from November, um, I also share the link here with you on YouTube. And I'm creating a playlist of all of these drop-in sessions for you. So there is a link for you to follow as well in a case you want to listen to some older ones because as I mentioned, we tend to have the guest speakers. So it's quite nice when they're profile and talk about how they go about using DMP online. Um, I'm not sure, Sarah, whether there is anything you would like to mention, or we can just open uh, the space for questions. Yeah, no, I, I don't think so. Um, it's been a busy couple of months, um, so there's lots of links to follow up there if you hadn't been aware of certain news. Um, but if you have any questions or comments, we're very happy to hear them, either in chat or you can unmute your microphone and, um, and ask anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. 
<laughs> it's fine. It's it nothing you have it's, to ask. It's fine. It's completely fine. I think it is the time of the year when we are all ready for the Christmas break. Um, so but it's lovely um, that you joined the call today. Um, I don't know whether there is anything from our end, or I can just slowly conclude. Yeah, no, I, I think from our end, just a huge thanks mm -hmm. to all of you for being users of the tool. Um, certainly, I know a lot, a lot of the universities are, are very active, so it's nice to see um, the outreach you do to, you know, to the different departments and research groups in your uni. So we're very grateful of that support. Um, and just thanks for all your input, you know, the feedback you've given us on the features and the, um, you know, way that you've informed the developers because it, it definitely makes it a nicer experience rather than a stronger output. Um, I see Rosie's just typing something so we'll maybe just give a minute in case there's a, a question there. Oh okay, um, she's asking is the integration with Chris or ethics system still on the horizon? So so yeah so what we've um, planned with the Americans when they came over um, is to do um, a couple of integrations in this first period of the year. So we're going to focus on the re three data and the licensing tool because we think there'll be simpler things to, to do initially and to, to demonstrate. But we certainly do want to do further integrations with Chris Systems or with things like Infoetica, I think was the main platform that had come up when we were discussing this um, in... Uh, where were we? In Amsterdam. So the last user group in the Netherlands, that was the main system that came out. Um, and what we put in the roadmap is to do, you know, other integrations. We need to define exactly which platforms or systems um, from essentially summer next year. We, we want to do a, a few that are kind of easier initially just to demonstrate what's feasible. So it would be really good to get feedback from all of you about which platforms or systems you're using. So which Chris systems are the higher priority ones for you. Um, and we, um, we've, we've been mapping our data model to the common standard that's come out from RDA. So at least we know, you know, we can expose our, our information in a standardized, structured way. That should hopefully make it easier to do those approaches to, you know, um, Pure or Infoetica and talk about how we'll be able to make our data available and hopefully pull things in from them. But any feedback you have on priority systems, that would be really useful to hear. Okay, Rosie's just saying, great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. um, are there any more questions from Carlos or I saw there was Alicia? Like yeah, Alicia yeah. and Bev. Um, if you do have anything else, you're also very welcome to message us or um, send something into the help desk. We're very happy to to hear anything else. Okay, um, so... If we have no more questions, um, don't forget to follow us um, on Twitter at DMP Online. We do have an account on Facebook and LinkedIn. I did share the links with you in the chat. And I also shared the link for this agenda um, in a case you just want to follow all the links at one place, just to make it easier for you. Um, and to conclude, oh, quest Carlos, no questions from my side, <laughs> thanks. Okay, no worries. Um, and just to conclude, our next drop-in meeting will be on the 22nd of January. Um, oh my God, the wrong year here again. I'm sorry. <laughs> 2020. I just can't move to 2020. Okay, 22nd of January, 2020. Help us then, um, the UK time. And we already have a confirmed speaker. Um, it's Dr. Sander Bosch, uh, from Brie University from Netherlands. So um, we hope you'll find the time and join the call. And uh, we do wish you um, Merry Christmas and have a lovely time off. And thank you all for joining this morning. Yeah, thank you very much. Enjoy your holiday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.